Hey everybody and welcome back! It's finally time to review the Ordis card pool and conclude my Beyond the Gates set review. If you missed any of the other factions, make sure to check out my previous videos on my channel. And as always, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to show your support. As a quick reminder, I'll be ranking the cards as a 1, 2, or 3, where a 1 means I think the card will see little or no play with that hero, a 2 means I think the card is going to see a decent amount of play but it isn't a must run, and a 3 means if you're running this hero, you should probably be playing this card. These numbers represent my current opinions based on some initial testing, but my stance is often changing and feel free to bring up your experiences and opinions in the comments. Now let's take a look at the heroes. The first hero is Sigismar. He's really good at go wide strategies since he already summons a token each day. You'll want to play a lot of low cost characters and other token generators, and these will pair well with things like Monolith or Bastion or Charge which can boost up all of your characters on that wide board. As for Gorong and Toxin, you're going to give your characters Defender, but they'll also get lots of boosts, which can help you prolong the game until you can overwhelm your opponent in the late game. Things like Ordis Cadets or other token generators will work well to take advantage of your hero power. And then you'll also want things like Ordis Carrier and other strong permanents like the Monolith that you can set up in the mid game when you're not able to advance as easily because of Defender, but just make it so that in the late game you'll be able to take both sides every round and just be unsurmountable. As for Waru and Mac, the final hero, it's definitely one of the scariest in the early meta. It uses cards like Robin Hood with the bureaucrat trait that have annoying effects for your opponent, and with Waru and Mac you can keep them around on the field for two days in a row. You also have a lot of other cards that want to have multiple characters on the field. Things like Charge and Ozma will be really good here too since you'll start most days with the bureaucrat and a token already, so it's going to be really easy to meet their requirements. Now that we've got an introduction to the heroes, let's look at the cards that you'll use to fill out their decks. The first one's Paper Herald. It's a one drop and I think that this could definitely see some use in Sigismar or Golrong. The stats are pretty poor from hand, but if you're uncontested in an expedition, it's not going to matter. And then later on you can get that token for zero mana when you use the support ability. I don't think you really have room for this in Waru, but for the other two heroes, you could pair this with permanence or different things that normally take up all of your mana to still be able to try and take one expedition. The rare version gets extra stats, but since most of the time you're going to be using the support ability from the reserve, I feel like you kind of miss out on the benefit of those stats for the second half, so it's not the best upgrade, but maybe something like Sigismar would appreciate the two in water. Ordis Trooper is another one drop and this time you've got a pretty wonderful stat line, just the ones all the way across the board. This works perfectly with Sigismar decks, it's kind of like an after you and just fair stats to be able to uh, play a cheap character that can benefit from charge. Even Golrong might like this, but I feel like it's the least necessary there. And as for Waru, I think this is actually very valuable as well because a lot of times you're going to want to play a bureaucrat and put it to sleep on the first day and so if you have an Ordis Trooper to pair with one of those two drop bureaucrats you can still try and take one expedition or at least block your opponent on one side so I think yeah that this works really well a lot of your bureaucrats are pretty expensive so having something cheap like this to fit into your curve early on or even the late game is very beneficial the rare version gets extra stats for mountain and water I think this is super strong and way above average for its cost and it works really well in Sigismar. Gorong could possibly like this too to block or advance their own expeditions and uh, Waru could definitely play this. I feel like though it's an option where if you played it it'd be a fine card but there is a lot of competition for those rare slots and for a lot of these heroes the common might be just good enough. Ordis Cadets summons an extra 1-1-1 in its expedition when it comes into play. This actually has some of the worst stats for a 2-drop, but the only real benefit is it's split between two bodies. In Sigismar, I think that can be really helpful to help you get enough characters out to, for Ozma or to pair better with things like Charge and Monolith. And for Golrong, since you'll be able to boost that token, it can be pretty beneficial. But for Waru, I think you're more than happy to just use things like Frog Prince and stuff instead of this. And maybe even in some of the other heroes, depending on how you build them, you might prefer something like Frog Prince or even just the Rune Scribe that has naturally better stats if you're not playing a lot of things like Charge. The Rare summons the token to the other side and gets an extra one in water. I think the only time you'd really want this is in Gulrong. It actually can be pretty good there because now you can have one character without Defender on one side and then put that token with Defender on the other. 
so that you can try and actually advance while blocking your opponent. I think that could be nice, but it might be a little bit of an unnecessary change. Monolith Runescribe is probably one of the most vanilla cards in the set. Perfect stats though for a 2 drop and that's honestly good enough at times and so Sigismar will probably be running this off and on as just an extra low cost character. I think Golrong might fit it in at times too. It's one of those cards that could easily get swapped out but it could also be exactly what you need. I think War though has plenty of things uh, to run instead of this. You can just run a lot of your own two cost bureaucrats and so there's probably not a place for this there. With the upgrade, now you resupply if you control a token. I actually think this can be pretty good in Sigismar to just keep your resources up. For Gulrong, it's actually a little hard to meet that requirement until you set up some permanents, so I don't think it fits easily there. And while this does work in Waru, I think that the rare slots are just too tight and you'd probably put something else in instead. Monolith Legate is one more two drop. It sabotages after rest if your expedition fails to move forward during dusk. It's a pretty efficient way to sabotage. It costs less than most cards that sabotage, but you do have to play it on a losing side as like a little bit of a drawback. That's exactly what you want to do though in Waru, because the first day when you sleep it, you're probably going to lose your expedition and then it sticks around to give you a body the next day. It's absolutely a must run there. For the other heroes though, I think it's possibly good enough. With Golrong, a lot of times if you're a defender, you're going to be blocking yourself from moving anyway, so you can take advantage of this. And even in Sigismar, the stats are good enough that having this extra effect might just edge this out over Monolith Runescribe. For the rare, you barely notice a change in the stats, but there is this extra effect now, like the Paper Herald, to summon a 1-1 token. I think if you're running this, it has to be for that extra effect because the st change in stats isn't big enough to make a deal. In Waru, you just want to play the common so that you can use it from hand and reserve normally. But for the other two heroes, I think this could definitely have a place. It's not my favorite card from the set for them, but if you're playing a permanent like the Monolith, this could be a pretty good card to give you that 1-1-1 to come into play on the same turn so that you're not having like no impact on the board. So yeah, and things that are running like permanents or uh, some of these other like really aggressive Sigismar, the extra one drop early could maybe give you a 2-0 and there could be a little bit of room for this. The Frog Prince has my favorite stat line for a 2 drop, 303 is so good. Half of the time your opponent's only going to be in the water and forest and so then you can basically have it be a 3-3-3 when you use it right. For Waru, this is a must run in the common or at least in the rare, one of the two you'll be playing. For the other two heroes, I feel like you'll definitely be considering this. You might decide to use something like Cadets instead, but maybe you'll even have room for both. But the stat line on this is definitely good enough it could see play anywhere. For the rare, you get really good stats for a run drop as well. I think that this is actually pretty good in Waru. I originally was just running the common for the longest time, but I really like having more one drops to make my uh, options more flexible. In Sigismar, that's aggressive. This could be pretty good. I think though, this probably has like the least use in Golrong. You'll probably want to run a rare that has a little bit more synergy with her than just decent stats, and you're not really as aggressive, so by the late game, you'd rather have like big expensive bombs that are rares instead of this little one drop. Monolith Archivist has one of my least favorite words from this set, Defender. I feel like the stats are not quite good enough to make up for that keyword. A lot of the times you can get Frog Prince to essentially be this if you use it in the right expeditions. Maybe Golrong could play this because you're going to be blocking yourself from moving anyway with Defender, so then you can just take advantage of the extra stats, but I don't think you'll see play anywhere else. And even though you can remove Defender with the rare version, I feel like it's still just too weak, even for <laughs> Waru, I don't think this will ever really see play. Moving on to the next card, Ozma. On the other hand, this card I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite cards from the set. I actually think it's one of the best cards in Waru too. It's definitely um, a little bit underappreciated, but yeah, being able to get two draws off of one card is very strong. And the stats aren't even that bad. Uh, in War, this is actually the easiest to trigger, even more than Sigismar, because you'll already start the day with two characters in play each time. 
And then in Sigismar, it's not too hard to meet this requirement easy either, especially if you get a car uh, carrier into play. So yeah, I think this is really good for both of them. And you might even run this in Golrong. It's a little bit harder to meet the requirement there, but if you get the right permanence out, it can be possible. So I'm sure people will consider it. For the rare, we're just getting a bump up in two of the stats. I feel like the card was plenty good as a common. Maybe you'll run this in Sigismar if you're really trying to be aggressive uh, because you'll care about those stats a little bit more, but I don't think the rest of the heroes are playing it for the stats. It's just for the effect mostly. Gatekeeper, this was pretty strong in the starter deck, and I still think it is very good. I think that a lot of people will run this in Sigismar, but I did build a deck the other day where I took this out, and I think that sometimes you might just have enough one drops and two drops, you can essentially get the same two bodies. This does give it to you for one card. I'm definitely not saying this is bad yet, but I think that it's more of an option maybe than some people realize. Uh, I, I still haven't decided quite yet if I think this should be a uh, three or if the two makes sense, but for Golrong, I think that this is probably a three. It's really nice to summon your tokens on the other expedition so that you can still actually win one side. And yeah, for Waru, you'll just be want to be playing bureaucrats or doing something more on your game plan. For the rare, you get two tokens. Uh, you actually lose out on some stats though, so I think the net benefit is only like plus one biome stat, but it's on more bodies. If you're doing a go wide thing with Sig, maybe that's good, but honestly, I don't think this will see a ton of play anywhere because the common's probably good enough. And uh, yeah, for the rare, it wasn't an amazing change. For Order Spy, you've got the very average, uh, kind of like the base sabotage for the set. It's a three cost two, two, two that sabotages like some of the other cards. From the reserve, it just costs two and is a two, two, two. I think that in Sigismar, you really need some disruption and stuff like this. He's kind of like Kojo in that you don't necessarily have to have a ton of synergy, you just play a bunch of standalone good cards. And I think sometimes you don't have quite as many power plays and like outside of Monolith and Charge, a lot of what you're doing is pretty fair. So I think you need to have disruption and removal like this to be able to stop the things your opponent's doing to kind of bring them back to your level. And in the other heroes, this could definitely see play too. Depending on how important sabotage is in the meta, you'll definitely be slotting some of these in. I think that a little bit of a weakness of Waru is you only sabotage after dusk with your legate. And so I think running like one or two of these can definitely surprise an opponent and be pretty good even there. For the rare now, you can get an extra token from the reserve. It is a very good rate, but there's just a lot of competition for the reserve slots. I think Golrong and Sigismar definitely could consider running this, but it won't really have a space in Waru. Kokoba's pretty fine. It felt pretty good in the starter deck. With the right setup, you can get 444 for this, but it takes a little bit of time to be able to get that many characters on the board. I feel like it's not quite as good as Yongsu, which can give you more stats for probably less of a requirement on a common, but some people might play this in Sigismar for sure. And for the other two though, I think that, yeah, it's not really what you're looking for. With the rare upgrade, you get an extra boost. I, uh, I do like that you can get the benefit both times it's played. So it is a pretty strong rare upgrade. I still think though that this probably would only see playing Sigismar maybe and not really in the other heroes. Ord's Attorney is another one of the bureaucrats. The 2-3-3 stat line is a little underwhelming and the cost is not great here. You could definitely play this in Waru. I think most people are going to opt for the rare and probably in all of the decks if you're playing this you're going to go for the rare. 2-2-2 two, two, two for 2 is so much better. Um, I think that you also already have a lot of three drops that you're gonna be playing in Waru, so putting this now in the two drop slot is amazing for you. And getting a draw on a two class card is very strong again. You might run this in any of the heroes just because getting that draw sometimes is really strong and the stats are fine for a two drop. So this could honestly see play anywhere, but um, it's it's far from a must run in Go Wrong and Sigismar. For Thoth, you've got the same stat line as the common attorney, but now you're going to be summoning a 1-1-1 soldier token. 
um, if your expedition doesn't move forward. I think that at this point, with only so many bureaucrats, you're pretty much running all of them in Waru, and this one's pretty good for day one. It lets you push both sides pretty hard to try and get a 2-0 on your second day, or at least have a pretty strong board presence before you drop your Robin. Maybe in Golrong, since you're going to be blocking yourself a lot, you could use this and then set up a token going into the next day. I can definitely see the potential there. But for Sigismar, I feel like this is just too slow for your aggressive strategies and you don't really want to be losing expeditions. With the rare, you get an extra token. I do think this is really strong. It's just, is it worth the rare slot? Originally, I thought it would be in Waru, and I still think that you could play this and in Golrong as well. The biggest thing I've noticed though is that this is great on like day one and day two when you're okay losing an expedition to set up but it is kind of sad that this is a rare when you draw it in the late game because at that point you're often trying to win both expeditions and make up for a slow start so I don't know if I would run this as a rare since I only really want it for the first half of the game and in the second half it's a mana orb. Jean was super cool in the starter deck as well the stats are pretty bad the first time it's played but it makes up for it by giving you those recruits on the next day it's a pretty good way to set up for a future turn in Ordus, but I think a lot of times you're going to be doing that either by sleeping a bureaucrat or playing a permanent. I'm not sure how much play this will see. I think it's just fine in Sigismar and Golrong in that if you run it, it'll put in some work, but I don't know if it's the best option. And in Waru, if you're spending this much mana, it, it better be on a sleeping bureaucrat, so yeah, this doesn't really have a place. For the rare, it costs even more now, but you get a much higher return. I think that this can be great to set up before like a monolith turn and once you have monolith out this will just be a super power play to close out the late game but it's also just a little bit of a win more if you're ahead enough on the board that you can play this without getting behind maybe you could have just won through other means too people can definitely consider running this in golrong and sigismar but i think it's far from a must run there's a lot of other things that you could do for five mana like just playing a monolith which might be better the council is very expensive at 4 cost, but you do get the 444 in stats. I feel like this ability to just lock down one side is not quite good enough for the first two heroes, but for Waru where you can put this to sleep and keep it for two days, it's going to be a lot easier to play one on each side and totally block your opponent out. I do feel like the council is really only great when you can get one on each side because up until then they can just try and trade and take the other expedition from you. At the 3 cost it gets a lot more attractive but I'm only giving this a 2 in both forms for Waru because unlike some of the other bureaucrats that are good in every matchup I think this one's a little more situational and it's just going to depend on what's popular in the meta. This absolutely wrecks Muna but in some of the other matchups like against Bravos or even like the Mirror it doesn't really do anything so it's far from a must run. Quetzalcoatl was first revealed as the common and we didn't find out the rare until a little bit later. I feel like it is pretty good even at the four cost, but this three cost version just really puts it over the top. For Sigismar and Golrong, it's just too hard to get advantage out of this effect again because you don't really have a way to keep this out for two days. But in Waru, where your hero power naturally lets you keep this around, you'll be getting a minimum of one token for this, which is as good as Thoth. I think this is definitely one of your favorite turn one plays and just really strong overall. And this card is insane when you're facing things like Fen or Trace that resupply and draw extra. So yeah, I think that this is just always good for Waru and sometimes really, really good. Robin Hood, another powerful bureaucrat. Even the common is pretty strong. The only reason this probably will never see play is the rare is just also incredible. I think that this is still worth giving a two for Sigismar and Waru in even in the common form. I feel like you can play this out and then follow it up with some cheap cards and really mess up your opponent's turn. For Gulrong though, even though this could be a cool play, I think that it's just a little too far off of your game plan for the slot. Looking at the rare, now it makes all cards your opponent play cost one more. This is definitely going to be one of the most hated cards in the set. It really changes the way you have to play the game and think about the game. 
there are very few removal cards that trade into this well. Almost all of them are three cost, and so with this out, they're gonna cost four, and it'll just be an even trade, especially if it's only sending it to the reserve or something that you're not really getting a ton of value out of the trade. This is one of your best cards in Waru. Definitely a three. Probably even worth considering in Sigismar. You don't have to run it, but there's been plenty of times where I've tried this out, and I drop it at the start of my turn going first, and it makes it really easy to 2-0 or 1-1 my opponent. So, yeah, I think this can be pretty good even there. Anubis is a very interesting removal. I think that the way people are playing the game right now, they often lead out with a very cheap character, or they're starting the game with tokens in play. And while that's the case, you're going to have a really hard time getting value out of this. Sigismar and Waru can use this card super easily, and I think it's worth considering even if not now at least at some point in future sets it'll be a pretty good bring but yeah just depending on what you're going into you can use this to get around tough and to take out uh, very annoying threats but it also can be completely dead if you're uh, going up a deck that has like a token in play like a sigismar mirror so worth considering definitely not necessary to bring for all of these, it's going to be a little bit harder to use them in Golrong because you have to work a lot harder to get that first character in play. So it's probably not worth considering there, at least for now. For the rare, you just subtract one from the cost and barely change the stats. I think this could still be pretty good in Sigismar and Waru and worth considering, but it'll have to really be meta dependent. Isatok has a crazy ability to lock down a whole expedition. For Waru, this is definitely worth considering. In most of my decks, I've played at least a couple copies of the common and rare. Oftentimes, I'm not running three copies of Isatok, but I usually run a couple to surprise my opponent or for those times where you really think they aren't gonna have a removal in hand. It is sad that when you play this, it kind of opens up your deck to losing to removal when none of your other cards um, trade poorly into those so yeah for Waru it can open yourself up a little bit give you a vulnerability playing this but in the times where it works it can be super strong to just control the late game I have this feeling that this might be okay and go wrong but half of me is saying that it's absolute garbage there I feel like if you play on one side and get some boost your opponent might go to the other expedition and then you could just maybe play this on the side that you're already winning to block them completely and just uh, get a little bit of extra stats. I don't know though how realistic that is. I think that it could, it might just be a little bit more like you're playing uh, like a draft or something at that point where it's like a fine play, but I don't know if it's like a worth running type of play. Another cool thing to think about is if you run uniques that put a card from your hand in reserve, this can be a great card to run because then you can just get the draw off of it from the reserve and kind of keep your resources up. For Sigismar, this is just way too expensive and does way too little to help you advance to run it. For the rare, you're going to get that cost reduction and stat reduction. I think this is fine in Waru again. I don't know if it's necessarily better or worse than the common, but I think that, yeah, so, you, people will be running this. I don't know though which rarity and I don't know how many copies. It's still something I'm trying to figure out, but for the other heroes, I don't think you'll see this version of the cards you play. Now we're in the out of faction rares. Looking at Foundry Mechanic first, this is a pretty good stat line for a one drop. It's only one worse than Orda's Trooper. And now looking it also has this discard from reserve ability, a support ability to make the next permanent you play cost one less. In anything playing huge permanents like Sigismar or Golrong, this could definitely see play. I think Golrong's the most likely to run this because you'll really a lot of times want to set up two five cost permanents. And so being able to do one of them on the four mana turn can be really good. I think this could be fine in Waru. Probably it should be a one, but it is just like another trooper. And so there might be a version of the deck that really wants to make sure they have a one drop to pair with their two cost sleeping bureaucrat day one. And so like possibly you'll run a couple of these. I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit of a overestimate, but this card's pretty good overall. Foundry Engineer is another way to try and cheat out permanence for a little bit of a better deal. It can be nice to play this in Sigismar because then you'll have a body on each side before you drop your 5 cost from hand, and it could be fine in Golrong. I don't think it's 
the, a must run, you can do a pretty similar thing just by discarding something with a support ability from the reserve to get a 1-1-1. So there's a lot of ways to do some stuff similar to this. So I think it's con worth considering, but not a must run. And in war, you get no value out of the effect. So it's definitely not worth running. Jihan doesn't have a ton of targets right now. You can activate the on-play abilities of a permanent you control, but most of them don't even have one at this point, so maybe this will be better in a future stat, but for now the stats aren't that great. I don't think you'll run it. Amelia Earhart, there's going to be a lot of these cards that seem fine, but I just don't think you can play all of them, and this is one of the ones I think people won't be running. It's going to be a 3-3-3 from hand for 3, and a 2-2-2 two, two, two for 1 from the reserve. It's definitely best from the reserve, but honestly, I feel like you'll probably just run Rare Trooper or something other than this if you want to get those better stats. Yeah, I don't know. You could definitely run this and it'd be fine, but I think people probably will cut it from their list. Athena is in a pretty similar position. Playing that expensive one card for a day with that cost like five mana, it leaves you pretty open to removal and it makes you not very reactive. This could let you get some infinite resources in SIG. People could definitely try it and it might be fine, but I think that if you have like enough draw with things like Baba Yaga and Ozma, you might not really need these extra resources and you might have other stuff that's just as good as this. So yeah, I don't know. Another card that would be fine to play and would do all right, but I think people are going to opt for other cards instead of it. Ratatosker. So this gives you a ton of bodies, which can be amazing. It is pretty sad though that they're all on the same side because in this game to really get an advantage over your opponent you have to either 2-0 them when both sides or at least block them on one side and win the other. This is really good at letting you win one side for sure but it doesn't help you try and take down both so I think you could definitely run this in Sig and Golrong especially in Golrong where you want to have like really powerful plays in the late game. This is crazy but yeah this doesn't really have a place in Waru and I think that it's not quite a must run for a lot of these heroes because you might run around something that is putting those stats split between the two expeditions. Haven Trainee does split your effects between the two expeditions, but it's pretty weak from hand with the 3 1 1 stat line, and then from the reserve, it's kind of expensive. Golron could probably make use of this, but I doubt the other two heroes ever would. Haven Warrior has. Pretty great stats. It is just a stat stick again. I think that for Sigismar, you could run this. It would be good and it would help you 2-0 your opponents on the first day sometimes. I think that in Golrong, this can be pretty good too to block people early on while actually still being able to advance. You could definitely see playing either of them. Maybe even someone would splash this in Waru, but at that point you'd probably just run like the Council or some of your other 3-3-3s for three. Atlas is cool, but most of the time when I play this and I give my tokens gigantic, it feels pretty underwhelming. You basically just get an extra one worth of stats on the other side from where your token is, so you kind of need a lot of tokens for this to be beneficial or for them to be boosted. That only really ever lines up in Golrong, so this could be a pretty powerful finisher, but it is a really late game card where you need to have lots of tokens in play before you use it. So definitely could fall out of favor and not be run in any decks but pretty cool achilles 555 for five is just a little below average this is mostly just a resource card that helps you play less cards in a turn to conserve your resources i don't know if anyone though is really like super worried about running out of cards in their hand and yeah, this is just a pretty expensive card to just be putting okay stats on the board. I don't think it'll see a lot of play anywhere. The Sandman has a very cool and beneficial effect. Giving something to sleep is a pseudo removal. This can be really good against anchored characters. It's great into Muna. If they play on day one, something like Dracaena, and then you just sleep it with this, you can 2-0 them with Sigismar, and uh, yeah, just mess them up a lot. I think that this is really good in Waru 2 because a lot of your cards you want to put them asleep and then you can also boost them as well so that you can just have those annoying effects lingering on your bureaucrats longer. This could definitely see play though anywhere just depending on the meta if you're facing a lot of anchored characters this could be great and in Sigismar you can just sleep your own token too and be able to get that 3-3-3 the next day so 
Yeah, I think this is almost like an anchored character for Sigismar or removal. Could definitely be seen play in a lot of decks. Uh, people should be trying this out and just like making sure if it works or not for them. Verdant back has that defender again. I think that anything that requires you to have three characters in play for its effect to work is pretty bad. Things like Young Su, where you only have to have them in play when it comes into play, are a lot better than this. But if your opponent uses a removal on your like Quetzalcoatl or something, and now this has Defender 2, you could get absolutely messed up. And the other heroes that don't even have Bureaucrats, the stats here are not good enough for the cost. Yeah, I don't think this will see play anywhere. Baba Yaga, one of the best draw cards, probably the best draw card in the set. The stats aren't that bad from hand, and they're great from reserve. I think that it works perfect for Sigismar to keep your advantage up. I'm probably going to be running this in all of my decks for him at this point, and I think that in Gulrong, when you want the game to go long, you're going to need a lot of resources too, so you'll probably be slotting this in as well. Maybe if you find that like perfect deck where you have the exact cards you need and the exact costing so you don't run out of resources, you might be able to get away without running this in the future, but for now it feels super great to me. You could try this in Waru, but you already have a ton of draw there with Ozma and Attorney. I think it's the least necessary there. I'm, I haven't run it yet in him, but I'm sure if someone tried it, it'd probably be okay. This card's kind of like Amelia Earhart. You just get slightly better stats now from the hand and worse ones from the reserve. I think once again, it would be fine if you used it. It's kind of like an after you from the reserve. But I just don't know if it merits the rare slot, and there's probably other stuff that we've seen that is just a little stronger, so it wouldn't be bad in any of these heroes, but I just don't think you're picking it. Kawat, pretty underwhelming. If you sacrifice a 1 1 1 character, you're essentially only getting plus 4 in each of the stats, 4 4, which is very average for a 4 drop, and you have to sacrifice a character in this card's expedition. I think this is super weak. The Kraken makes you sacrifice two characters. It could be pretty cool to finish a game out, but I think that removal is so common in Altered and it's often four cost or less. I think this is just way too risky to ever play. So yeah, I don't think anyone will be running it. Looking at the spells now, Charge is very strong. So many of these heroes are gonna be going wide. It's the easiest for Warrior and Sigismar to go wide, so I think you have to run this for them. For Golrong, it's not even a bad card there. You don't have to run it, and you might just prefer characters because your hero can buff them anyway, but yeah, it could even still be worth considering. The rare lets you play it twice, taking away the fleeting. I think that this could be good in a lot of the heroes, but I feel like it's just not super necessary. It's not going to be a surprise the second time, and oftentimes one huge charge turn is good enough. So you could definitely try playing this, but I don't think it's necessary. Teamwork training is a lot better than people might think. If you haven't figured it out already, this card is very good. It's so efficient to remove something for two cost, and Waru and Sigismar, both of them are going to have so many characters on the board. You can basically remove anything you want with this. Probably card, even cards that are like five cost, like Atlas, a lot of times you will be able to remove with a teamwork training. It doesn't hit permanence at all, but I think with the decreased cost, this is absolutely worth running in Sigismar and Waru. In Golrong, it can be a little harder to get the characters on the board, and since you want the game to go long, it might be sad this has fleeting, so definitely not necessary there. You might like this rare version a little more where you can summon a token as well. That can help you a lot since you need to get more characters on the board and the hero power buffs it up. For Sigismar, this might even be cool to try out too because you can just get that extra token to pair with like a monolith or something. But yeah, at this point, I think the common was perfect for Waru. Don't mess up a good thing with the rare. Sticky Note Seals, I just barely changed this. Literally right before filming the video, I had it as a three for all of the heroes. And now I've changed it to a two. I'm almost always running this in all of my decks. It's always pretty much a two of, but it is very well represented for me right now. I think the only thing is, you could run some other cards instead of this, but as the meta evolves, if there aren't a ton of big permanents like Monolith and Brass Book Hive, you definitely might move away from this. If you're removing a character, a lot of times Banishing Gate can be better, since when you play Sticky Note Seals, they can just play it the next day from the reserve again, but Banishing Gate actually gets rid of it completely. 
Also, Banishing Gay is a little more flexible at hitting low-cost characters or unique low-cost characters. So, while this is very good, and oftentimes I think I'll run it depending on the meta, I guess maybe a 2 is more accurate because there are a lot of other options that you can run instead of this. And I think sometimes if you're not that scared of any of the threats in the meta, you could just take out the removal for another strong character of your own to play. So this is a very good card, absolutely consider it, but maybe I guess it doesn't deserve a 3 for now. For the rare, I'm not super impressed. If you want to play it twice, maybe you should have just used Banishing Gate to get rid of the card completely by putting it in the discard pile the first time you played it. Once again, this is best when you're taking out permanence, and it could be really good to take out like two hives in a row, but I think almost all the time, if you have the common, you'll be trading favorably into your opponent, and it's probably good enough, especially since this rare slot will often be a mana orb in a lot of your matchups. Open the Gates is a lot of value if you have a way to boost the tokens, but without it, it is just 4 4 4 for 5 and then 6, which is actually pretty bad. In Golrong, though, where you're getting double value out of each of the bodies, I think that this is pretty great. It is hard that it's split evenly between the expeditions. It makes this a play that you want to use at the very start of your day because it'll be really hard to block your opponent on one specific side that they're going for later. Possibly people could just be throwing this in Sig, but I think you'll just want better one drops that you can be more reactive with. But you'll probably be running at least the common or the rare of this in Golrong. And yeah, in Waru, where it's going to be a little harder, you're not going to have Monolith to buff these. You definitely don't want this. For the rare, it is much better in Golrong, but maybe the common's just good enough. It is nice. Now you can play it as the last play in your turn since you can pick where the tokens go a little bit more uh, perfectly. And it does cost five from the reserve. I think Sig, if they were running it, the common would have been fine, and they're probably not really running either version, and yeah, War, you still don't want this. Celebration Day. I think this is surprisingly weak. Five mana just to make an opponent not be able to move on one side is not a lot. It's going to even be hard for you at that point to win either side. If you'd ever run this, it'll be the rare version, which blocks both sides. It's only really going to be good if you have something like Grand Endeavor, which lets you move in spite of playing this during the day and so yeah in like a crazy control grand endeavor deck that somebody whips up you might run this but i don't think that's going to be the best way to play any of the heroes keylon burst is a very good removal but it does take up a rare slot and you have so many good removals as commons if your most annoying threats are going to be four cost permanents or less in characters you might end up slotting this in taking out like sticky notes and running this and teamwork training but I think this is basically just a 2 and maybe even a low 2 because you can probably get by with just things like teamwork training instead of this. The main use case for this would be if Haven Bravos Bastion decks are really strong because it's pretty much your only way to get rid of low cost permanence but otherwise I don't think you'll see a ton of play. Nurture, I think that the boost on this it's kind of like a charge but it's a little bit weaker. So if you're already maxing out on charge maybe we'll run this in SIG 2 but I doubt anyone will really be playing this card. Get this self does draw two, but the cost of sacrificing a character, while it is easy to meet for some of these heroes, it is a little high to where the return doesn't start to be that amazing anymore. In a Sigismar deck that goes hard early and runs out of gas, you might need something like this for the late game. And in Golrong, you can do some surprising stuff with this where you sacrifice a card with Defender to be able to move on a day. So for either of them, maybe it'll see play, but in Waru, I think you have enough draw and this is just kind of a weird thing to use your rare slot on. Conjuring Seal, you're drawing two cards again. Honestly, I probably would prefer to just play the previous card we were looking at if that's the effect I want, and the reserve cost of five is basically unplayable. Yeah, I don't really see anyone using this card. Banishing Gate, I think, is a little bit better than people realize. Discarding a card is a lot better than sending it to reserve. For permanence, Sticky Notes hits them equally the same because it can discard, but yeah, for characters, annoying things like Robin Hood or Hydra Kena, this is better to just get rid of them completely. I think that it also is nice that it's a little more flexible, but the higher cost does hurt. You're going to have to pick which removals you want to run. This could be the one you go with in any of the heroes just because of like the spread being able to hit so many things means you might not have to run as many removals since this can just cover all of them but 
maybe if you don't like the cost you'll just take the cheaper ones that are less flexible yeah it'll be up to you celestial blast i don't see how you'd ever make this work even if you remove two things if you're putting nothing on the board it's going to be pretty hard to win so yeah not a fan of this this set looking at the permanents now the first one's orders carrier this was great in the starter deck I still think it can be alright in Sigismar and maybe even go wrong, but in Waru, if you're going to want to set up advantage, you'll just play a Bureaucrat and put it to sleep. It can be a pretty big tempo loss to play this, but the payoff is good. I could see people running a couple of it in some of the heroes. For the rare, it's a very big investment now. I think you're only really going to run this in Golrong. For Sigismar, you just run the Monolith. But for Golrong, if you run Monolith and you don't have a way to put bodies on the board, you can't actually get that much value out of it. I think that, personally, the way I like to play Golrong is I set up some strong permanents, and then in the late game, I just win all the time. The other way to play here would be to try and actually not get behind that much in the early game. And then, even though you aren't that much stronger than your opponent in the late game, you only need to 2 them like once to catch up. So depending on if you're trying to play that uh, pretty like evenly paced Golrong or the big like turtle Golrong that sets up late for the late game, you may or may not run this. The Monolith is a, another crazy permanent. For Sigismar, I had this as a 2 and then something made me want to change it back to a 3 right before I started this recording. I think it is very good there. It can lose hard to removal, but if your opponent doesn't have the removal, you can pretty much get an auto win. And honestly, if you play anything to discount the cost of this or to just like summon tokens from the day before like John, at that point, even if your opponent removes it, they're probably only trading expeditions with you. So if you're not getting behind playing this and it can just win you games, I guess it is really good still. and. Yeah, you should probably be at least considering this in Sigismar. For Golrong, I think that depending on the way you're building her, if you're just going all in on the early setup and then just really winning the late game like I've mentioned, it fits perfectly there. Now you can give all of your tokens that come into play essentially two boosts with her effect and this. So this can definitely be great, but it is kind of committing to you getting 2 would on multiple days if you're setting this and other permanents up. For Waru, once again, if you want to set up advantage, you don't want to play a permanent, you just want to play a bureaucrat. The rare version only hits non-tokens and the cost decrease is pretty minor. You could definitely try this in Sigismar and it'd probably work fine, but there's probably better ways to play these heroes right now than with this card. Grand Endeavor, we mentioned a little briefly. So this card lets you move one of your expeditions forward at noon. It's a pretty cool effect, but yeah, the common version is just so exposed to removal and it doesn't have any immediate impact that I doubt you'll ever run it. If you want to run this card, it'll be this rare version that has Tef2 now. At this point, it makes it so that your opponent can't really get that good of a trade into it, so you're pretty protected when you play this. I think it'd be easiest to slot this into Sig. If you're going to run it, it'll probably be with him. I don't think that you have to run this though really anywhere. and. I'm not even sure if it is that viable at this point. I think it could work, definitely try it, but I don't know if that's the way I'm gonna go. For the out of faction permanence, we get the two cost version of Brass Book Hub. It is all right, but I think that Ordis Carrier is pretty similar and it lasts all game long. This could definitely work though in Sigismar or Golrong. Maybe if you're afraid of Robin Hood, this could be all right in Sigismar because you don't have to pay extra for effects like this. I don't know, this card could see some play, but it's far from like a must run for Waru. Once again, not a huge fan of permanence there. Looking at Armored Jammer, I think that this could be pretty good, but I don't think you have quite enough permanence right now for any of the heroes to really want to use this. If you're just going to sabotage with it once, you should probably run something like Ord Spy instead. And it is pretty hard to set up two permanents in Sigismar or Golrong. If you do it, you're probably already winning, so yeah, I don't think that this is worth running right now. Kelonic Generator seems a little bit embarrassing. It costs so much just to be able to draw one card, and you can use it over and over again on future days, but I think if you're setting up a big permanent like this, you should just play something like the Monolith. Bountiful Meadow, at first I thought this was crazy. It's a very good ramp card for Waru. It just gives you that one extra mana for all the rest of the game and it essentially only costs one the first time you play it. It's such a low investment. The only thing putting this at a two is you can kind of run out of cards when you use this. 
and a lot of times you can get a pretty similar result by just playing one of the rare bureaucrats that costs one less and so then across two different turns you'll essentially save one mana anyway so honestly i don't know you could run this it could be great but if you're up against someone that gives your cards fleeting or has a lot of sabotage and discard effects on you you'll be pretty low on resources and you might just have to put this into the mana i feel like personally right now i'm opting towards not playing this i feel like it's the safer way to play because it just preserves your resources a little more and then i think that it also just lets you use your rare slots more flexibly i don't know this could be worth trying but i think a lot of players are moving away from it and i can definitely see the value in running other rares over this baba zizba draw a card and then it gives you akisha's ability essentially for the rest of the game if you run this in sigismar you can essentially just be playing akisha now at this point and have like a more controlling version i don't think that's the way anyone's gonna go but it is an option to play this and it's not a bad card innately so yeah i feel like you could try messing around with this if you want to play like a different version of sigismar but i don't know if it's going to be the best one for the other heroes i feel like it's just too hard to set this up and have something to sacrifice each round so i don't see it seeing play at all i wanted to thank some of my teammates who helped me out with making these ratings they're always a ton of help congrats on making it to the end of this review make sure to leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments if you're in the states seriously consider going to the first big event for altered in the u.s it's going to be hosted by Gamers Guild on October 12th in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm going to be there and I can't wait for it. Gamers Guild also sells a bunch of products online. You can buy starter decks and Kickstarter or retail boosters using the link in my description and it'll give a small kickback to the channel. If you buy from them anyway, I'd really appreciate it. Now that this series is over, let me know what type of content you want to see next. I was thinking about sharing some deck profiles and guides or making an updated Market Watch video. Let me know what you think or give your other suggestions as well. Until next time, thanks for watching.